Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome all of you to our worship service here on this Lord's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers who are here with us this morning. We wish you and your families a wonderful day together as we celebrate fatherhood on this day. We come together with a feeling of bittersweet as this is going to be our closing, formal closing service here at Franklin Memorial United Methodist Church. We are having worship next Sunday, so please do know that we are gathering next Sunday to worship once more. But today, we recognize and acknowledge where we are on the journey, and we pray God's blessing for all of us. There will be some special things in this service that are not going to be typical for our, our Sunday service, so please do be aware of that. We have some people here today that we want to recognize and welcome as they're going to be part of our service this morning. Christina Mancini, we want to welcome Christina is from St. Mark's Church on Frankfurt Avenue. Christina, we're so glad you can be with us today. Sue Creevy is here doing <laughs> triple duty, maybe. Sue is from Crescentville Church. She and Pat are really a lot of the reason we're able to still be here after COVID. Those were the, they're the brains. How did Sue stand up for a second? I think you would do well. <laughs> I will always remember those days prior to that first Sunday in COVID, and it was because of Pat and Sue that we were able to have service that Sunday morning. Pat and I downstairs here in the music room, Sue in the comforts of her home, but yet working at her computer and making sure that service happened. So we are thankful to them. And Sue is also here representing Crescentville Church, and we're thankful for that. Swapna Lazarus is here. Let's welcome Swapna. Swapna is a member at Lighthouse Fellowship United Methodist Church, and she's going to be receiving something from the church at a later time. As well as Pastor Dave Wayne Herrera and his wife Pearl. They are here. We welcome them. So Pastor Ben. We have Mom, Pastor Ben and Stephanie. We're glad that you are here for By Grace Alone here at Franklin Memorial Building. We're glad that you are here. Tony Hampton and his wife Angelique. Tony, I know you don't have to say anything, but I am going to ask you to stand up for a second. And Angelique, they, they, win the, they win the prize. They came from Millville. I came the farthest to be here today. And I want to tell you why. You, you, you can be seated. I'm going to embarrass Tony a little, just a little bit. Tony's a man now. But when I first knew Tony back in, back in the 1900s, even back in the 1980s, Tony was a boy. Uh, of many, many boys and girls from the Kensington section of the city. And we were very active in, in our churches there. And Tony was one of the kids who came to camp. I've been trying for the last week and a half to try to get someone from Carson since far. Unfortunately, the director's not able to come and others are not able to come. But I thought of Tony yesterday and I reached out and was just very thankful. Tony is representing many children. Carson Simpson Farm, who have gone to Carson Simpson Farm over the years because of the church support that not only here at Franklin Memorial, but many of our churches have given. So Tony and Angelique, thank you so much for making the effort to be here with us today. Barb Simons is hiding back there, but we're glad <laughs> she's there. Barb is going to be playing our organ this morning. Barb has been a friend of, of mine for many, many years, and I'm just so thankful she was willing and able to be here today so that we might have our organ be a part of our worship service this morning. I told Joan and, and Cass this morning that some of my best inspiration comes at the last minute. And I apologize to them, and yet I'm very thankful to them. Joan and Cass have flowers here today. Not flowers cut, but flowers that are planted. Esther Lorianne gave us that encouragement last, year, last week to bloom to go and plant flowers, to be reminded that we have a future. And so we have potted plants. Some of them are even from Pastor Lorianne's plants last Sunday. We're thankful to have those. And so as we see them, there's going to be a lot of symbolism that we're reminded today. As we are here in this place we call sanctuary, we're here in this place that we know God is. We also know we take God from this place. We, and we know that God is always with us. But we're thankful 
for this sacred space that we know is the Frankfurt Memorial United Methodist Church building. And we're so glad that we can have all of these persons participating with us this morning. Please know those of you from the, the congregation here at Frankfurt Memorial, take note of the, of the announcement around transferring your membership or, or connecting to another, not only, not only a United Methodist Church or another church, but, but please do know that if you want to transfer your membership to a United Methodist Church, there's a fairly simple procedure for that to happen. And we can make that happen in the days and the last couple of weeks that we have here together. After the, the end of this month, the records from our church will go to St. George's United Methodist Church down on 4th Street. It's, a, it's our historical church that is there on 4th Street, and they're the holders of records for churches that have closed. So your records will be there. If you, want, if you know where you would like to go, if there's a United Methodist Church, especially if you would like to transfer your membership, see Pat uh, at the end of the service today or call her in the office so that we can make those arrangements for you. If you're interested in bringing your membership to Crescentville Church, they will be having services on July the 2nd, and their new pastor, Pastor Brendan Van Gorder, is going to be there, and I'm sure in the, in the, in the early weeks of his appointment at Crescentville, he would be happy to welcome you in to transfer. So do know that these opportunities are yours, and we want to simply encourage you as, as you look for a new church home. Are there any other announcements? If not, then I invite you to stand and let us stand together as we join in singing and welcoming each other through our chorus of welcome. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Consecrated to the ministry of God's holy word and sacraments, both having provided refuge and comfort for God's people, both friends and strangers alike. Both have served well our holy faith. It is fitting, therefore, that we should take our leave of this consecrated place, lifting up our hearts in thanksgiving for this common store of memories. Let us join together as we sing, Now Thank We All, Our God.
heaven. Eternal God, whose Son was made the cornerstone of a temple made of living stones. As we move on from this place, may we so live our lives that they will continue to make known your grace and love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. those of us who profess Jesus as Savior and Lord, this is where it starts. Do you remember standing up here not too long ago? Yeah. Why were we standing here just two months ago? About two months ago. Do you remember? Do you remember why we were here? Hmm? You whisper in my ear? It was for Jack. Jack got baptized. Jack became part of the church on that day. And I heard a story that you wanted to know about when you were baptized. Because you don't remember. Is that right? You were probably Jack's age. And sometimes when we're that little, we don't have memories way back then. But you know, you know now, because I heard that mom got pictures out. And you got to see your, your body and you're your getting baptized when you were a baby. And so you got to remember your baptism. And guess what? You weren't the only one. Many of us that day remembered our baptisms because of Jack's baptism. And it's important for us to understand that baptism is where we start our, our faithful lives. And we have to learn those. And hopefully as you continue to grow, as many of us have continued to grow, we take those vows and become members of churches, just like so many people became members of this church. We're glad for that today. And we pray that God will find other churches for all of us. We pray that God will find a place for all of us to continue living out this faith. So thank you so much, for Amelia. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Mom for all of the ways he reminded us of our baptisms. We're thankful for that today. Thank you. As we continue on in our worship, we take time this morning to give God thanks in our sharings of joy. We also take time to share concerns so that we would be able to pray for one another. I would ask at this time if there are joys or concerns you have so that we might rejoice with one another, so that we might pray for each other. Are there joys or concerns this morning? grandson Daniel's graduation party. It was phenomenal. Lots of food, and we met some of his friends. Amen. Thank you. Other joys? Yes. Yeah, my daughter in is in the hospital. Uh, okay. Felicia. Felicia? Felicia came off there. And uh, we also celebrated her mother's birthday yesterday. With all her family. And what is her name? Uh, Geraldine. Geraldine. Well, we, we rejoice in Geraldine's birthday and let us pray for Felicia as she is in the hospital. Let us keep her in our prayers this morning. Other joys or other concerns? Amen. It's our niece's birthday today, Justin. Happy birthday, Melissa. Happy birthday, Justin. Happy birthday, Melissa. Happy birthday. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, we wish her a happy birthday. And I guess. 
you have to share your day with her. Right? Yes. That's how that works. Well, we're glad for that. Happy birthday. Other joys or other concerns? Yes. I have joy in the first day that the Lord led us to Martha's memorial. I'm sorry? It's just been a blessing and it's a bittersweet joy because, you know, you all know why, but, uh, but I know what God will let us do. And I just appreciate you all letting us so much and pray God for us. And then we are grateful for the relationship and, and friendship that has been shared between by Grace alone and Franklin Memorial United Methodist Church over, over these years. I'm thankful for that. Other joys or other concerns this morning? So, for Miss Pat and myself and you over the coming weeks. Yes, first for, for Pat and Sue and myself as we continue to, to work out. Our, our endings and our new beginnings. Let us keep us, please keep us in prayer. Ah. And celebrations for Pastor Randy and Pat who are both retiring. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I, said, I should ask for prayers for Pastor Cindy. She'll be putting up with me. Yes. <laughs> I think she may have the same jobs for you. I have a feeling that. There's a tablet that I keep seeing when you're not. <laughs> well, let us take time to pray. I'm going to ask this morning that we begin with a time of silent prayer. And then as today is Father's Day and as tomorrow is Juneteenth, I have some prayers that I would like to, to begin with. And then we have a prayer that will take place actually throughout the sanctuary. So you might want to keep your eyes open as you pray, as we pray this litany, as you see that printed in our bulletin. Please, I would, I would encourage you, it's not often we say that open your eyes when you pray, but this is the time to do that, so that as you see and hear what we're, what we're praying about, your response of we give you thanks will truly be from your heart. So let us, let us be in prayer together. Almighty God, you rescued your people from slavery in Egypt, and throughout the ages, you have never failed to hear the cries of the captives. We remember before you our sisters and brothers in Galveston, Texas, who on the day of tomorrow, many, many years ago, received the glad tidings of their emancipation. Forgive us for the many grave sins that delayed that liberating word. Anoint us with your spirit to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year of your favor. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, giver of life and love, we pray that you would bless all fathers today and their children. Grant them wisdom and devotion in the ordering of their lives, that each may be to the other a strength in need, a counselor in perplexity, a comfort in sorrow, and a companion in joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Welcoming God, we give you thanks for all those who have entered these doors and encountered your presence in this place. For all those who have discovered your love shown to us in Jesus Christ. God of hospitality, we give you thanks. Transforming God, we give you thanks for all those who have entered your church through the waters of baptism. For those who have received the gift of new life, 
to the promise of the Holy Spirit. God of new life, we give you thanks. Ever-present, ever-present God, we give you thanks for all the ways in which you have come to us, and for your means of grace made known to us, especially through the gifts of bread and wine, your body and your blood. God of love and God of mercy, we give you thanks. Encouraging God, we give you thanks for the worship that has been offered here, for the ways in which your praise has been proclaimed and your love lifted high in our hearts, and for all those who have, who have enabled worship in this place. God of celebration, we give you thanks. Inspiring God, we give you thanks for your living word proclaimed from this place over the generations. Your word that informs our thinking and motivates our living. And for all those who have preached in this place, God of grace, we give you thanks. Uniting God, we give you thanks for all who have stood before you and pledged themselves in marriage to each other, for new relationships celebrated and new families created. God of joy, we give you thanks. Comforting God, we give you thanks for all who have joined the company of heaven, whose memory we still cherish, and whose love still inspires us. God of peace, we give you thanks. As we go now from this place into a further journey of faith, we give thanks to you, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> now, as the people of God, with the confidence that we have in God, let us pray to the Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Now let us continue in our worship as we receive our morning tithes and gifts and not.
final offering. I invite those persons who are representing the various churches and ministries that we have noted here in our bulletin, if you would please come forward at this time. Good morning, everyone. We're so happy today to be in the position to be able to afford some of our good fortune to those in the community that will continue the spirit of which Frankfurt Memorial was born. We um, wish we were rich. We wish we could endow you with so much more, but we do leave with you our faith in God and our good intentions for the community. And we ask that you take these blessings and all the hard work. This is some people from our committee that have worked on this the whole entire time. And it has been laborious, it has been heartbreaking, and we have gotten through it together because we are one family of God. And we want you to continue in the way that we have tried to do for the last 153 years. Um, when I call your name, are you going to call names? No, you are. I'm going to call names. <laughs> did you give me oh, the envelopes? No, you didn't. I will, I will do that. <laughs> okay. You want the envelope, the microphone? No, no, I'll, I'll be good. St. Mark's Church, Frankfurt. Christina. Lighthouse Fellowship, United Methodist Church. Caring for the Sotman Scholarship Fund, Swapna Lazarus. Crescentville United Methodist Church, Edward Payne. By Grace Alone Church, Pastors Gabe and Pastor Ben. Carson Simpson Farm Camp, Tony Hemp. Let us continue in our thanks. Let us stand together, singing our doxologies, giving thanks to God in our hearts. trust in you, we can always know, we do always know, you provide in all of our lives, in all of our circumstances. You are always and will always be our God. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the offerings both given and received this morning. We pray that as we give unto you, in whatever form that might be, 
you would be glorified in our giving. You would be made known in all that we do. Gracious God, bless all who have given. Bless all who receive, we pray, as we ask this now together through Christ our risen Lord and Savior. Thank you all. Let's now sing together, Christ has made the shore foundation. acceptable sacrifices to God through Jesus Christ. For the scripture says, I chose a valuable stone, which I am placing as the cornerstone in Zion, and whoever believes in him will never be disappointed. This stone is of great value for you that believe, for those who do not believe. The stone which the builders rejected as worthless turned out to be the most important of all. Another scripture says, this is the stone that will make people stumble, the rock that will make them fall. They stumbled because they did not believe in the word. Such was God's will for them. But you are the chosen race the king's priests, the holy nation, God's own people, chosen to proclaim the wonderful acts of God, who called you out of darkness 
his marvelous, his own marvelous light. At one time, you were not God's people, but now you are his people. At one time, you did not know mercy, God's mercy, but now you have received his mercy. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Cass and Joan, I think there's a pattern here. I get my best inspiration sometimes the very last minute. And as I've been wrestling with this passage, and I should have put dots together over the last few days, but I did not. I would have brought to you for you here a round metal object. So I need you to envision that with me. I could hold it in my hands around this size. Sue and Cass and Edward, who else, anyone else here from Crescentville that I miss? It's still right by the front door of the parsonage. You probably never noticed it. It's really not noticeable. But it's something that I just said to Cindy a few days ago. As we have moved, we're not living in the parsonage any longer at 412 Center Street. We live now at 2338 Fairhill Avenue in Glenside. And I said to Cindy the other day, did you happen to pack, I don't want to call it what it is, that, 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 he, that, that, that orb? He said, no, it's still by the front door. So Edward and Sue and Cass and anyone who hears me, please don't go get it. Let us go get it. It's, it's the funniest thing. Cindy and I were riding our bicycles a number of years ago, and we were out, I can't even, I don't know what direction, out at, on the far end of Lincoln, or no, the far end of the, the um, Forbidden Drive, the trail that goes across, um, I guess that's the northwest part of the city. I don't know that neighborhood very well. And we were riding around, and we were riding, and all of a sudden on the side of the road, I saw this metal object, perfectly round, stuck in the side of the dirt along the road. I went and I stopped, I went and got it. It was a curious object. I tried to figure out what it was and why it was. We couldn't. So we happened to knock on the door of the neighbor who was closest to that. No, I'm not, I'm not remembering this correctly. I think we just took it home. I do remember talking to Thelma Saunders, a, a former a member who has since passed uh, of, of Crescentville Church. We thought we had something significant. One of the neighbors in the, in, in nearby said that Lafayette had been there during the Revolutionary War, and maybe it was a cannonball. Well, a little bit of a little bit of knowledge can be dangerous because we found out it was not a cannonball. We did find out from a neighbor, her son had been on his track team and was known to do shot puts across the road. And that's what it is, a shot put. It's about this big, I think it weighs 16 pounds, and it's worth nothing except it's a great story and something I really want in our new home. Many, 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 many people and Jesus is nothing. We live in a country where God doesn't matter nearly as much as perhaps one day, days past. You know that God matters. And you know the truth of these words that we read this morning. That we are a part of something great. That God has built something call the church. We know in our presence here today, even in the, in the face of adversity, our presence, here, our presence here today signifies to us, reminds us that though this is a glorious building, it is not the church. You and I, together, we are the church. We have these buildings, these edifices that are set aside. We call them sacred space because we know that the teaching of God happens in these places. 
It's who we are as we come out of these places that matters more than anything. Today is indeed a bittersweet day. It is sad, we are saddened to know that no longer will be Frankfurt Memorial United Methodist Church. And yet, if we hear these words that Peter wrote, especially this 10th verse, this last verse that we read, we're reminded, first of all, of who we were, but we're also reminded now who we are. There was a time when we were not God's people. Other translations say we are, we were no people. But now you are God's people. And your being God's people doesn't change with the closing of this congregation. For this congregation is but one aspect, one part of a greater congregation that knows no name or denomination, but simply walks under the banner of Jesus Christ, who is indeed our Lord and our Savior. We are today God's people. There may have been a time when we did not know the mercy of God. But today we proclaim that we do know the mercy of God and we have received the mercy of God. Through the waters of baptism, we have received God's mercy. Through faith that is placed in God, we receive God's mercy. And when we continue together living lives of faith, interacting with one another truly as the people of God, truly as the family of God. God is indeed made known. I'm struck by the simple words of Jesus when he spoke of his disciples and said that by loving one another, others will know you are mine. When we love one another, when we live in harmony, when we share together what we know of God's goodness, God is made known. And we gather this morning to celebrate that. And we gather this morning to entrust ourselves to God in whatever future there holds, especially for those of you here in the membership of Franklin Memorial Church. May we all indeed pray for each other. May we all indeed encourage one another. May we all indeed find those kinds of places where we can continue to place our faith in God and place our faith in each other. And continue to be the church wherever it is that God will place you. Know that those will be my prayers in these days to come. Know that even in my retirement, I will be available to you if you need or want to connect with me. I will hopefully, hopefully shepherd you to those places where you may flourish. But more than anything today, know now, know today that you are God's people. And that won't change at the end of this month. You will continue be God's people. As you realize that, as you are strengthened by that, know that God will continue to be faithful to take you to those places where you will be able to continue living out your faith, your trust, and your hope in God. Amen. We are a people of faith. We are a people of hope. And our faith has been placed in God. We confess and profess that faith every time we stand and repeat these words of the Apostles' Creed. Words that have been echoed long before this congregation even came into being. Words that were created 
to speak to our faith in God. I invite you to stand together and let us affirm our faith as we speak these words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Now let us continue in song as we sing together. The church is one foundation. It's Jesus Christ, her Lord.
Let us sing together. Oh